lecture and worksheet that we're going over on Monday, January 24th. Uh, we had a PowerPoint, which I can't show and do this video. So here's a video. So a video of a video. So one of the things you have to know for the test, we have a test on Monday, is that the valence electrons are those on the outside. Why is it not stopping? There we go. Um, the valence electrons are the, on, the electrons on the outside, and it goes one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, all the way across. And it's always the same. And then Lewis dot diagrams or electron dot diagrams or Lewis electron dot diagrams are ways of modeling what those valence electrons are doing. So you put them around in a circle, top, and then um, right, and then we do bottom, and then we do left, and then we do it all over again. So here you'll see that we're adding dots around the outside. And as we add uh, dots around the outside, we eventually get to eight. And once we get to eight, we start all over again. This is shown on the worksheet. As we go across, we add valence electrons. And then we start all over again, adding valence electrons. And it always goes in a circle, so you want to draw um, them like this. You don't want to draw oxygen um, like this. One, two, three, four, five, six. Don't want to do that. You want to do one, two, three, four, five, six. You want to do it like that. Okay. So the first thing we got to do is make sure you can do dot diagrams. Um, you can just look at um, this, or you can use the periodic table and go, there's one valence electron, then two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. And then you find the one you want to do. You want to do phosphorus, so there'll be five dots around phosphorus. So we would put one two, three, four, five dots around phosphorus. We're also going to do calcium. So let's look at calcium. Calcium's here, and it's one, two. And so the metals have very, very few dots on them, uh, less, four or less. And the nonmetals, this one and this one, have more than four, four or more. So here's the... Um, Here's a metal, and it has less than four. And here's a metal, less than four. And then the carbon is, and silicon is in the middle. So these are my metals, and these are my non-metals. Okay, back to the video. So we're also going to learn how to do the dots on um, ions. And one of the ions we make is from metals, and metals will lose electrons. So in the first column, they'll lose one electron. In the second column, they'll lose two. They'll lose three, and then they'll lose four. To show that, we need to remove an electron. So remembering that that dot represents an electron, and lithium, which is three, has three protons and three electrons. And when I lose the dot, when I lose one electron, this will become <coughs> two electrons, and so I'll have a one plus charge. That's why I have a one plus charge here. I really am talking too much. Um, not uncommon. Um, so what you want to do is you want to show that you're losing electrons. For, so for a metal, there are no dots on the cation of the metal. For the 
Non-metals, they gain electrons. Um, they'll gain three or two or one. And remember that uh, this group, oop, doing too many things at once. So it's on pause. That this group here is called the noble gas group, and this group is not reactive. And in fact, that's important because the reason that we add this many electrons is we get up to eight electrons, like neon. This gets up to eight electrons. This gets up to eight electrons. And this gets up to eight electrons. And once you get to eight electrons, you don't react. And so some other fluorine or oxygen must react um, until it fills up to eight. And then the next one reacts until it fills up to eight. So once you get to eight, it's very hard to react and um, the reaction goes on with another um, sample. Okay, so let's go back to our worksheet. And when we last were here, we had five dots here and two dots here. This is my non-metal. This is my metal. And what will happen is when I do phosphorus, uh, and I go, oh, this ion, because we're doing ions right now, is three minus. That will mean I need to add three more electrons. Now, when I did this in class, a lot of kids only did the blue ones. You need to do phosphorus like this to show that it's three minus. And what you make is you make an octet. An octet is eight electrons, just like the noble gases. And those noble gases are stable, so we're gonna be adding electrons to create something stable. We'll add three on this one We'll add two here, we'll add one here, and that's where we get the three minus, two minus, one minus charges for this. Um, so we create an octet. Whereas with calcium, calcium's a metal, so then a metal becomes Ca2 plus, and to become two plus, that meant I got rid of these two electrons, which you don't have to show. And so here, whenever we do a metal, we want to have, oops, want no dots on our metal. So our metal is lacking the electrons because we've stripped it away and left behind the full shell that's underneath it. What do I mean by that? So remember we did Bohr models or electron configuration and calcium had two here. And meanwhile, there were eight electrons in this shell, or 18. And so when I strip these away, I am left with the eight electrons, um, or 18 electrons that are left underneath there. So that's how we get eight electrons for a metal. Okay, I do have to move on. I'm going so slow in this lecture. Sorry. All right, next. Um, the key ideas that we were going to talk about during this was how do you show the transfer of electrons uh, for an ionic compound? So in the table, uh, this is the example that's in the table right here. And what I'm showing is the number of dots on magnesium and the number of dots on bromine. But it is important to know that I didn't tell you how many pieces to go do. And you would have had to go through the whole process of going, well, this is two plus, and this is one minus in order to make a compound. I need that to have a balance of positive and negative charges, which means I need another one minus two, and then I name it. Um, 
and that's important. So that's how I knew that I had to do two bromines because it didn't tell me that I had two bromines. I had to figure it out from the charge. And then what you do is you move the electrons over so that again, my non-metal is making an octet and my metal, it has no dots. So that's the example I'm about to show you on the video. You should stop the video and you should try, oh, well, we're gonna do this one. Um, and we'll do this one together. But here, let's run this through. So first I determine how many pieces I need. And then I go, well, the magnesium is a metal, so it will lose its electrons. That shows up right here. And the bromines are going to gain their electrons. So now we're going to show the addition of an electron. And that's the end of it. You're just trying to show how many electrons are added or lost. And the next thing we need to do is covalent compounds. So in class, we did this. There's the sodium. And then the sodium is one plus. I used the periodic table to figure that out. Here's sodium. It's in the first column, so it's one plus. And then there was uh, sulfur. And the periodic table says that this will be two minus, two minus, one minus, zero, three minus. So sulfur is two minus. Now I want to balance the charges so I can write a compound here. And that means I need another sodium. There it is. So now I have two pluses and the one minus. So my formula is this, and you call that sodium sulfide and using that IDE ending. All right, and then you do the dots. Oh, we need another sodium. Sorry. So now we hit, that's how I knew I needed two sodiums. Dot, dot for sodium. Sodium is right here, so it only gets one dot. And sulfur is here, so it gets one, two, three, four, five, six dots. So we need six dots. One, two, three, four, five, six. Now we need arrows. The arrows show the transfer of electrons from the metal to the non-metal. So these no longer have electrons shown. And then this will form an octet. And you can see that this also formed an octet, and this will form an octet, and this will form an octet. And this had no dots on it. And so it's lost all the electrons on the outside. So we don't do anything with our sodium. And then we had these six electrons to begin with. And then we added these two. So we want to show our octet of electrons. That's it. That's all you do for these. Uh, use arrows for this. Okay, so for the next section, and I am going a little faster, so pause if you have, or go back. I will give you a covalent compound, something made of non-metals, and you are supposed to show me how they share electrons. Um, if I tell you what's in the center, so oxygen will be in the center, and let's get this going again. The hydrogens will be on the outsides, Six valence electrons for oxygen. Stop that for a second. So six, one, two, three, four, five, six. And for hydrogen, there's only one. So that's where these dots came from. And then your job is find the lone electrons, right? Which is, which is here and here, and here, and here, and connect them to other, one, other lone electrons on other atoms. Never connect the 
combination. So we're not going to connect these. We're only going to connect these. So that's what the video shows. Let's go back to the video. Connect, connect. And then you redraw it um, in the second box of the worksheet, either with, stop, whoops, a little farther, either with paired electrons, that's what this means. I have paired electrons that are helping me, that are bonding the hydrogen to the oxygen. And I'm making an octet around the oxygen, two, four, six, eight. And I'm putting two on hydrogen, as you'll see in the video. Two for hydrogen's okay, because hydrogen's in the first row, and its noble gas only has two electrons. So that's why it's okay for hydrogen to have two. And alternative to, stop again. An alternative to the paired of electrons is lines. This is better seen on the worksheet. So you can pair your electrons when you share them, or you can draw lines for electrons when you share them. Here's the second example where we're sharing electrons and I'm showing lines and I didn't even bother showing it with the other things. It is important to remember that these dots on the outside are still present in the model. So don't, you have to draw something on the outside almost always. We see with hydrogen, there is nothing else on the outside. But for most other things, there will be, I think for every other thing, there'll be electrons on the outside to make that octet um, that's stable. All right, we're gonna do an example from the worksheet, uh, and that is NF3. So that's right here. Um, and I might as well just draw it while you're drawing it. So N, F, F, F. Oops. That's not what I want to do. Actually, is it going? It's going to stop. Thank you. <laughs> this is where I wanted it to be. N has five valence electrons. One, two, three, four, five. And fluorine has seven, six, seven. Okay. So now back to our worksheet. It's right here. Um, so N has five. Look, I'm going around in the circle correctly. And F has seven. Remember the worksheet also showed you uh, the number of valence electrons at the top. I can't go back, sorry. Um, here's the pattern. Now that I know the pattern, I don't have to think about it. I can just draw it out. Uh, without using the rule to go around clockwise one at a time. Okay, there you go. And then I need to pair them up. So I'm going to switch colors here. I'm going to bond this single electron with this single electron. I'm going to bond this single electron with this single electron. I'll bond this single electron. Oops, with that single electron. So I bonded three of them, but there are three different fluorines. So there'll be a fluorine on this side, fluorine on this side, a fluorine on the bottom, and N with the two electrons that didn't change this one and this one are showing up here. Now we can use dots or we can use a line. So I'm going to use the line to show the connections. So each loop represents a different line. And then again, these electrons here need to be added to the outside of my fluorine. 
One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, four, five, six. So this fluorine has eight electrons, two in the bond. That's what I shared. This one has eight, two in the bond. This has eight, two in the bond. Um, and even the nitrogen has eight. Two in each of these bonds adds up to six plus two extra is eight. So everything ended up with eight valence electrons, which means it's stable and I don't have to do any more. Okay, and then the video finishes uh, with what if I um, have an open bond? So what happens when I'm trying to bond oxygen to itself, for example, and you make a bond, but you still have lone electrons. What can you do with that? You have to make a new bond. So it's possible for atoms to have more than one bond between them. So in part four, you can see that what's happening is we're creating a second bond. Here's a bond, here's a bond. That shows up here, one bond, two bond, or it shows up here, one bond, two bonds with the paired electrons in between, um, and then three, four, and that shows up here. This is the third bond and the fourth bond, or this is the third bond and the fourth bond. So it's possible to go up to three bonds. You can have one bond or two bonds or three bonds. So we're gonna watch the video, do that, and then um, that's it. We're all done. So you can do the worksheet by yourself or ask questions because you don't know what's happening. So here's the double bond. So let's go back a little bit, finish this one um, in class. And you can see here I'm making my octets, but I'd rat, I did bonds because I think bonds, line bonds look better. So here we go, we put those all together. And there's a problem here that you can see. I still have a single electron here and I still have a single electron here. So what I could do is I could bond these now, but if, for example, you put them together, oops, that's too far, that's too far. Oh, look at you guys get all sorts of examples. Um, when you put it together, You can see that there's lone electrons. You have to find, if you find lone electrons, you bind them. And those electrons are now going to be shared. To show sharing, I put them in the middle. But again, if you shared twice, we shared right here, and now we shared again. If you've shared twice, then you can make a double bond with two lines. And so here's my double bond with two lines combined to the um, oxygen. So there you go. That's all four sections of the worksheet. Um, and that should get you started and you might have questions. So there you go. Uh, 